right on the box, hi-fi made fun. And honestly, that's the direction I wanna go with this video. When I started my two channel listening journey, one thing I didn't expect was enjoying the gear can be almost as fun as the listening itself. Not only do we have infinite libraries of music available to us today, we also get to shop like kids in a store looking at all the new products. Little Class D amps like this newly released Fozzy BT20A Pro are like the Hot Wheels or Matchbox cars. They are the budget toy in the realm of hi-fi, and for whatever reason, they're a lot of fun. Maybe it's the small compact size, the feeling of getting a lot out of a small package, or the fact that it's kind of like the Swiss Army knife. All in one, a quick little solution. The Fozzy isn't generally the grand must-have toy that you circled in the toy catalog when you were young, the one that you thought you had to have. It's more likely the car or action figure that you ended up playing with the most. So let's check it out. Like I said, this is the new release from Fozzy, and I really like the direction that they're going over the past couple years. This is one of the cleanest implementations of these little class D amps yet. For one, no screws visible on the front, and a color other than black. It's matte gray, and it's actually quite nice looking. They obviously wanted to add just a touch of flare with the copper knob, and I feel like they nailed it. It's just the right amount without going over the top. If we continue to look at the front, the knobs have something new. They have a detent at the center point of the tone controls. Seriously, thank you. It's a pain to find neutral without the central detent. And in all likelihood, you're off a little bit every time without this. The knobs themselves are fine. They have no quality concerns and they feel mostly smooth when making any kind of adjustments. Flip this around and we have pretty much what you would expect here with one key addition over the original. Starting from the left, we have the RCA inputs. And next to that, we have a pre-out, which is new to the BT20 series. I for one will use this with a powered sub. It's a great addition since most of us will be connecting these to bookshelf speakers. And I generally tend to use a sub with bookshelves. Well, actually I'm testing the Bucart P300 right now and for a bookshelf, these have insane bass. So I shouldn't say always but keep an eye out for that one. Uh, I have a future review coming on those. Next to that, we have the speaker inputs, the usual, either twist for bare cable or insert a banana plug. And lastly, the Bluetooth antenna and the power input. Notice on the power input, it states 24 to 48 volts. The included power supply is a 32 volt five amp, but you could run as high as 48 if you wanted to get the true potential out of this. And the larger power supply will be required if you wanna see anything near the advertised power levels at a reasonable amount of distortion. But I'm not really concerned with this, to be honest. The included power supply still pushes this amp far beyond what you would expect. Give it a try in its base configuration, and if you really need more power, then you can go down that rabbit hole. So what do we have inside? Well, we get the TPA 3255 amp chip, which is a favorite of mine in these mini amp configurations. The original BT20A had the TPA 3116, so the 3255 in the Pro is a good improvement in my opinion more power and excellent SNR. These typically measure really well. The 3255 is the same as what's in the highly popular IEMA A07, but this takes things a step further with the Sagimi style inductors and Nichicon capacitors. IEMA followed suit with their new A07 Pro, but I'm yet to review that one, but I do have it over here in a box, so stay tuned for that as well. Another notable internal feature is swappable op amps. Depending on who you listen to, it's either a game changer or not worth the effort. But for the person who likes to tinker, I could see it being a lot of fun, similar to tube rolling, searching out those incremental gains, or maybe even just a personalization to the sound that you enjoy the most. So how does this one sound? Well, if we want to keep this on point to my intro, we should really treat this like that Matchbox car. Take it anywhere, throw it around, just maybe not ramp it down the staircase just yet. First things first, let's throw it in the office where these will live for a lot of people. A perfect size for near field listening. I have it paired up with an SMSL, SU8S DAC, and a Wii Mini. I have Amazon Music coming into my DAC that also acts as a preamp. I just turn the volume on the Fozzy amp to around three quarters and let the SMSL handle volume control. This also gives me a remote, which is always welcome. For speaker pairings, I've experimented with the Bacart P300, which isn't really a near field speaker, but I just wanted to see how well it could drive them along with the Emotiva B1 Plus. The sound, well, is clean. It's not the type of clean where it's like transparent glass, but honestly, it's pretty good. 
And it's quiet too. Nothing coming from the speaker has been idle, which is great because it's a major annoyance during near field listening. Let's move it over to something a lot more challenging. The KLH Model 5. It looks a little bit out of place paired with floor standing speakers, but I figured why not give it a try? Push this little lamp a little bit. It honestly did better than I expected. It wasn't as refined as something like my Audio Lab Integrated, but that also costs 10 times as much as this amp. Okay, let's throw it around some more. How about in the garage or shop space? Here I have it paired with an Arillac S10 and a pair of Sony SSCS5s. Things like this are perfect examples of how to use this amp. Heck, put one of these in your bedroom paired with something like a Weem Pro and forget about that sound bar. Or at your desk, or in your garage, or in your gym, or in your bathroom. Well, you get the idea. Basically, amps like this can find a use in just about any place and pretty much for everyone. It's a great option for a secondary system for those already in the audio world. Or on the other side of things, it's a fantastic starting point for someone who wants to dabble in two-channel listening before moving up the ladder to more expensive equipment. Really, it's a great value for both cases. As far as the sound, I should also mention the Bluetooth. I'm not generally a big Bluetooth user. Uh, I generally pair my amps with a streamer, either a Weem product or a Blue Sound, but I did test out the Bluetooth here primarily to test out the connection. They advertised 50 feet, and I found that to be accurate. I didn't have any issues there, and the sound was actually fine. It appears to be a decent implementation. The codecs available are AAC and SBC. While I may not be a big Bluetooth user, it's still a good move. Keep this amp simple and capable. So in conclusion, Fozzy is stepping up their game here with the BT-20A Pro. It's a notably better amp than the original, better features and performance. And important for many, it looks better too. It's nice to see affordable options that are actually worth buying. Keep up with the good work, Fozzy. I would really appreciate it if you could take a moment to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. It makes a huge impact to my channel and opens doors for me to get in new products to review for everyone. Some notable reviews coming are the Bacart P300 bookshelf speakers, part two of the CSS Tories, which is turning out to be a really fun build. I got a little out of hand during the finishing of the cabinets, so it's taking a bit longer. Maybe a week out on that one. I also have a couple of other small desktop amps, one that'll be familiar, and another one that's actually new to the market with some exciting features. I have the topping E50 and L50 desktop DAC and amp stack, as well as the one that I'm really excited to get in during the next month or two, an Orchard Audio Amp, and that one is gonna be a beast. So that's all for today. Take care, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.